We respectfully request the Sangha Great Virtues for the good sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma will to teach and guide us how to end birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize dawn birth. the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sananto Suche Do Ye Lai Hui Di San Miao San Pu To Xie. Namo Danakta To Ya Da Ya Alaha De Tam Miao Tam Bo Da To A. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma, a hundred thousand million aeons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one true and actual principles. Wu 愿解如来真实意 O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Wei Deng, Great Master Shen Hua, O monks and nuns and all good advisors and meet all for Chiếc Phật Bồ Tát, Kinh Thưa Lục Tổ, Hòa Thượng Thiên Hóa, Quý Thầy Cô và Quý Vị Thị Trị Thức A Di Đà Phật. Chú Phật Bồ Tát, Hello everyone, today is the 8th right, of January uh, 2022. Thank you all for coming, I'm glad you're here. We are continuing to discuss the first chapter of the Six Bay Track Sutra. Uh, we are currently on slide 328. The background is the... Uh, the last time we stopped is is that um, the fifth page gave a, an assignment to all his disciples to compose a verse for him to see, uh, to express their insights. Chinese word is xin uh, uh, What uh, the in, in English is understanding actually is the the uh, what the heart. The Chinese word is what the heart obtained, okay? It's not just insight. Uh, the, the insight is a poor translation because xin te, xin here is, uh, uh, in Chinese it means heart, it also means mind, okay? And, and therefore it's uh, ambiguous uh, on purpose, okay? So that's why to translate that into insight is not quite uh, as good but there's some things are not translatable. Uh, so it's not understanding, it's not insight, it's this is what uh, the heart has attained, if you will. Whatever heart means to you, could be 
the heart here, heart here for people like Vanessa is like uh, the instinct. <laughs> okay? Heart here for Dui is like what the mind knows, thinks about. Huh? <laughs> And the heart also means, has a third meaning. It means true heart. True heart is how Lian feels about her husband. <laughs> Sounds good? Huh? Okay. Uh, so much for Wei Yang uh, BS. Okay, so we are 328. The text is in front of the Fifth Bay Tracks Hall were three corridors. Wuzu Tang Qian Yo Bulang San Jian. Okay, that's a big temple, isn't it? Three corridors. The walls were to be frescoed by court artists, Lu Zhen, with stories from the Lankavatara Sutra and with pictures portraying in detail the lives of the five patriarchs, so that future generations can make offerings too. Ning Qing Gong Fong Lu Zhen Hua. And so you, you can tell that the fifth patriarch is pretty popular, pretty well respected. So he, uh, he, he had, uh, he, he had uh, a, a court artist, which is a big shot, who is a big shot. Court artist meaning that the emperor approves of him and likes his work. It's uh, no better uh, endorsement than that back then, okay? And so, uh, so this, uh, this artist here, uh, because the emperor uh, liked uh, Buddhism, so the artist learned about Buddhism, got up, to speed on Buddh got up to speed on Buddhism, so he was about to do a fresco uh, to the Lankavatara uh, Sutra. Lankavatara is Sanskrit, which means inaccessible city, uh, and you need to have spiritual penetration and go there, you have to fly there. So it's not for uh, ordinary people. So it's a high-level uh, sutra. Um, not sure we want to explain that because we are pretty low level ourselves. Uh, the pick lives of the five, first five patriarchs. So uh, the first five patriarchs, uh, just for as a reminder, the first one is a great, great one, great master Bodhidharma, Indian. And then Huika, uh, Bodhidharma, great master Bodhidharma, uh, in nine years' time, uh, trained uh, his first Chinese disciple, and only Chinese disciple, as a matter of fact. And Huika is pretty good. Okay, Heka is pretty high level. Okay, it's amazing that he got there from kneeling behind Bodhidharma. Just think about it. If 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 I ask you, if you are told were told that you only have to kneel behind uh, you know a monk for nine years and you will reach you know a pretty incredible level of Chan understanding. Uh, would you? Of course, Vanessa says, no, sorry, I'm busy. <laughs> anyone, anyone would, would go for it? You would. Would you be willing to? <laughs> because at the end of nine years, the only thing left to do is cut off your arm. <laughs> one, one more small step. <laughs> Blue. Cut Cut off. Not wait for nine years. No, 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 honey. It doesn't work like that. Nine years is the, the, the training is very interesting. To me, it's fascinating. And, and I'm not sure I can find people who are willing to do that. But you know, to me, the nine years, what B Great Master Bodhidharma did to Huika is to lead him bit by bit for nine years, okay? Uh, and only he wouldn't know what to do with Huika, okay? It's an adjustment every day, okay, for nine years. Uh, 
make, to make sure he doesn't quit. And Huika, as you can tell, Huika was a, a really extraordinary being. Can you imagine sitting behind someone with nine years, no instructions, <laughs> no break, no football? I mean, <laughs> basketball, soccer, you name it, you name your sport. None of it, okay? And, and so it's amazing what Master, Master Bodhidharma did for him. Go ahead, Konk. Master, you said earlier that uh, Bodhidharma helped him to adjust every day. So that means that there was an instruction? Not in a formal way. For example, it's like we doing right now is, is direct instructions. Whereas uh, Master Bodhidharma never really directly instructed Huika until the end. Okay, until the very, very end where uh, where Huika cut off his arm and then, and then was in trouble. So Master Bodhidharma explained to him, okay, it's, thank you. It's, uh, it's uh, actually it's more called more of fine tuning than an instruction, okay? Because back, by then, Huika was already, already enlightened. And then so Master Bodhidharma only uh, helped him uh, stabilize it, know where he was at. Okay, that's what's fascinating about it. And then uh, Sun Chan uh, is, uh, was uh, the third patriarch. Uh, and so Bodhidharma was first Chinese, second Chinese of Huika, and Sun Chan was uh, the third patriarch who got uh, cut off. Uh, the head was cut off by the emperor. And, and uh, when the head was cut off because the emperor believed in externalists and bad mouth Sun Chan and Buddhism, so the emperor didn't believe him, so, so he ordered him to be executed and they cut his head off. And Sun Chan, uh, when his fell, head fell on, on the ground, uh, I'll spew forth, spew forth the white milky substance instead of red blood. Uh, okay. uh, so the emperor re uh, repented and, and uh, he still went to hell anyway. Uh, so, and then the fourth patriarch is Tao Xin. Uh, Tao Xin, uh, mm. and and so uh, don't know much about Tao Xin except that he was a early cultivator. He was a boy cultivator under uh, Sun Chan, I think. Okay, and after that, Hong Ren, okay, is uh, was a fifth the current patriarch. Okay, now uh, you remember you notice this thing here. It's kind of interesting. He says, depicting the lives of the first five patriarchs. So it means that the fifth patriarch sort of believed, he very subtle, my boy, that he's like the same level as the first four patriarchs. If, let me ask, let me tell you, if Master Xinhua was there, as Hong Ren at uh, uh, fifth patriarch, the fifth patriarch position, do you think Master Xinhua would allow them to depict what he did? No, absolutely not. You get, you get it? And that's the difference between the level of wisdom of Master Xinhua versus Master Hong Ren. So far so good? Okay. Master Xinhua is a fantastic monk. He never uh, did anything for himself. And why would you want to fresco yourself on a wall and tell people how great you are? Okay, because when, you, when he came here, it's not f for himself, it's for us, my generation, future generations. It's very consistent throughout his entire life. Whereas Master Hong Ren says, I'm pretty important. I'm the fifth patriarch. You should know about me. Okay? Hmm. And again, that's a little bit of my disappointment with Master Hong Ren. I'm setting you up to see the fifth patriarch. This is Buddhism, folks. The sixth patriarch taught himself, not Hong Ren. Hong Ren only created the environment and the conditions for the sixth patriarch to be 
who he became later. Okay? And that's, that's fascinating about Buddhism because from, from the Chinese and from the scriptures, I have all, uh, I, I mistakenly th believe that, you know, the fifth patriarch, you know, all these patriarchs are so important and so forth. Actually, it's not so. Huh? It, it is a case only because uh, the students are so important. So at the fifth patriarch time, who were his students? Sheng Xiu and a thousand others, and after teaching them for a long, long time, what did they have? The desire to become a sixth patriarch and be willing to kill anyone for that. Man, that's if as a as a teacher, you'd be so sad, so heartbroken. That's all your students got from you. Hmm? Yes. Uh, I had this question that um, the part where the sixth patriarch went to work, right, hard work, um, like um, the, um, I was thinking that like the acknowledge how much acknowledge him, acknowledge okay. with the hand. <laughs> and then push him away. There you go. <laughs> That's called the meat away. <laughs> I love you, son, but get out of here. <laughs> yeah, so I was thinking that, um, hmm. like, did he really create that much blessing by work? By working? By work there? Or maybe not, because we were discussing, like, contributions and. Okay, and good impact. question. Ah, uh, good question. Time. Did he create a lot of blessings working with the fifth patriarch? What happened? What, why did the fifth patriarch order him to work and he worked for eight months? It's like fifth patriarch says, I don't want to, I don't want to hear you. Get in, get in the back and, and, uh, and uh, don't let people see you. And then he sort of forgot about him for eight months. It seems like, you know, the Americans would think that way, yes. Uh, but actually, what really happened? Yes, Wei Mao. Uh, maybe uh, he wasn't just planting uh, a bless blessing with the fifth patriarch, but with the Buddhist and Bodhisattvas and the triple jewel as well. Okay, uh, that's a plausible explanation, uh, plausible reason. Uh -huh. Anyone else? Yes, Blue. Um, I thought he did, but today I. Uh, now I don't think so, especially Master just explained also. Um, the so the dynamics are interesting, fascinating to me. You know, I used to have this notion that the patriarch is like, like an idol or something, but the patriarch differ, okay? They, they're all different. They serve a purpose. Go ahead, Jewel Kong. Master, is it similar to what six patriarch did the to uh, no not six patriarch who was that the founder of Ahai when uh, when the the master ordered him to do the water carrying the water for a long time. No, oh, that's what that's a Wei Shan, not not. Uh, oh, sorry. Is <laughs> is it similar yes, similar Fahai. way that's what of doing? Wei Shan it? did to Fahai. Yes, uh, um, similar. But it's a different teachers uh, and different students uh, because uh, the, the instructions differ from students to students and also differ from teachers to teachers. Okay? Yes, Black. Anita for Master, is it um, the sixth? Patriarch already have blessing. It's just that the fifth patriarch would like him to work and be hidden away so no one um, say that he is favoring him, that he knew all this thing already. Very good. Uh -huh. That's a very good reason. Absolutely. Many, many reasons why it happened. Okay? Uh, but, um, but the one lesson there you should pay attention to because 
uh, it's very important for us to learn from uh, the reported doings, the records of what the great teachers did. Agree? I'm telling you this because if you ask me to study, you know, the uh, murals of the of that uh, Lu Zhen uh, imperial court artist about the fifth page, I said, no, no thanks. Okay, yeah. but uh, what interests me is how the sixth page chart got there. Okay, uh, first of all, the sixth page chart became enlightened by himself by listening to one phrase, you should bring forth a mind that dwells nowhere. Ying wu suo zhu, a sheng qi xin. Xin, not xin, not xin. <laughs> the Vietnamese don't have, you know, you know, Apple, the Vietnamese don't have that xin thing. It's because it's to people like us, it's like a, 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 a course or, or, or like a, 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 a curse words. <laughs> so they can't pronounce sin. <laughs> they go from sin to sin. <laughs> they stuck on that. I was stuck like that for two, four, when I first started. It doesn't matter what you said. Uh, sin, sin. <laughs> you, no, sin. No, sin, sin. <laughs> it's so Vietnamese. I sat there. So this poor apple was teaching my nuns uh, uh, how to pronounce the Chinese correctly, especially with the Beijing accent. Okay, I love Beijing accent. But you said, you said, sheng, 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 sheng. <laughs> and uh, somehow the fourth sound, the shang, <laughs> the Vietnamese struggle a lot. Okay. Anyway, how do we get to? <laughs> it was so funny. So anyway, so the the um, so what happened? The lesson we draw from this. This is very important. Uh, okay. The important lesson here, to me, is that the six bay chart had. Tremendous blessings. So that when you heard that one line, and even though he was illiterate, he had no prior training, no Chan training, but it sort of triggered his blessings. So that's the power of Mahayana Sutras. You don't need the entire sutra, one phrase. And it help the seed sprout. Isn't that amazing? Who needs the entire sutra? Who needs the entire Da Bei Zhou? Huh? No. Just Master Hui Neng, Hui Neng back then, uh, uh, we can't call him Master yet, Hui Neng back then only heard one phrase for the first time even, and boom, he became four stage Aha. That's from blessings and from, from the power of the sutras that, that activated his certain teaching roots or certain teaching blessings. No training whatsoever. So far so good? So... See the importance of blessings. Okay, and this is Mahayana. This is this is this is the worst kept secret with the Chinese. But the Chinese don't quite understand the trim, enormous importance of harnessing the planting the blessing. Not just any kind of blessing, but has to be Mahayana blessings. All right, so. So Master Hayden, look at that. His, his record is that because his tremendous blessing, boom, he became enlightened with one phrase. Didn't have to be educated. That's fascinating to me. And then what did he do? As soon 
you know, and then they, he took care of his mother, and, and it's a uh, you know, mushy, tough, emotional stuff. You know, they didn't record that. They didn't say you know, it's not cool to say how Huy Nung cried and say, "Mom, I'm sorry, I let you go, but you know, I have to." Okay, and so forth. Okay, so he went over this fifth phase chart. Okay, and he walked a long way. Okay, along the way, he had more and more and more. So when he got there, the fifth phase chart says, "Go work." Don't argue with me. Okay? So he did. So, uh, so he worked. But the instructions were unclear. It's a typical Chinese instruction. Go work. Okay? And so he went and worked. And, and you know what? Again, he worked harder than he was supposed to. You go to a Chinese temple and they tell you to work on fresh rice. So you eat fresh rice. But no, Master Hui Neng, uh, Hui Neng then put, you know, carried some heavy stones on his on, on his uh, his back so that he can she can be you know his weight heavier so that he would would uh, uh, thrasherize better and just give me this it's interesting because you could hurt your back doing that and so he did it for eight months so it tells you that he had tremendous blessings because. Because, because he naturally plants blessings when given the chance. No instructions. Okay? So that's what happens to people who have blessings. They keep on planting and planting and planting naturally. So far, so good. We're not like that. Master Hui Neng is, is different from us. We must be convinced to plant blessings. No, he doesn't. He, no one taught him anything. They ordered him around. They looked down upon him. And what, guess what? He tried his best naturally for eight months. Okay? And for during those eight months, okay, uh, after eight months, uh, Master Hung Rang came to him and said, you know, Is the rice ready? Okay, it's very casually, Is the rice ready? And Hui Neng says, oh, he's been ready for quite a while. You see? So it's challenging. You know, the attitude is still the same. When he came and saw Master Hung Rang, he says, what, you know, what blessing you want me to plant? I've been planting blessing like crazy. Oh, by the way, I have a lot more blessing you think. <laughs> and, and, and so he said, oh, he's been ready a long, long time. Okay. And so that's... Uh, that's, uh, that's what happened. And so, uh, to me, uh, what's important about that, that, that section there, the inter that, that period of time there between the first, the, when he first came to the temple, uh, showed me a very important lesson that blessed people are never hesitant about planting more and more and more blessings when given a chance. They don't say, wait a minute, I've been working very hard, a lot more than my, the other people who are threshing rice. You know, a thousand people, that's a lot of people who need to thresh rice. He did a lot more work than the others. said, wait a minute, they don't, do as, they don't work as hard as I do. Why should I? No, he worked very hard. Okay. And, and so, uh, so he, he uh, so you see, so, that's what differentiates to me, Master Hui um, Neng, from from the other the other uh, people. Okay. Uh, now, as far as the point uh, that was made earlier about he planted blessings in fifth patriarch, yes and no. He planted blessings when given a chance. Okay, and part of that was at the fifth patriarch, uh, the place. Uh, uh, to assist his fifth patriarch, and that entitled him to receive instructions from the fifth patriarch later. So far, so good? This is a subtlety about these superior beings. They do certain things that we should study them carefully and imitate them. That's why they're here in the world, for us to show us 
how to do it. All right, 331. After composing his verse, Sheng Xiu made several attempts to submit it. But whenever he reached the front hall, his mind became agitated and distraught, and his entire body became covered with perspiration. Sheng Xiu, Zuo Ji Chen Yi, Shu Du Yu Chen, Xing Qian Zhi. 行至堂前，心中恍惚，变身乌流不得。嗯 ，three thirty two. He did not dare submit it, although in the course of four days he made thirteen attempts. 拧成不得，前后经四日，一十三度，成绩不得。嗯。So. Sheng uh, Xiu, Sheng Xiu, Venerable Sheng Xiu, composed his verse, okay, and tried to submit it, but he had uh, he had uh, uh, he had uh, a lot of reservations. He didn't feel confident about his verse, okay, and and so that means that his verse was. Composed by an agitated mind as well, he doesn't get just he didn't just get agitated after he's done. He's agitated the entire time, okay. Uh, so that uh, that's uh, another reason why uh, another reason why uh, uh, I un, I'm not impressed with Master Hong Ren because Sheng Xiu devoted his life to serve him. Sheng Xiu to me at that point. Was between third and fourth, most likely fourth. Okay, we don't have enough ble-、uh, teachings from him to confirm it, but from from the 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 thing here,、uh, from what、uh, transpired here, he's probably fourth. Okay,、uh, I'm not sure which level fourth. I'm not sure, but、uh, he has. So all these are the weaknesses of the fourth stage arhat. That Hong Ren should have helped him overcome, but did not. Okay, that makes me disappointed. All right. So all these are the sicknesses of the fourth stage Arhat. Okay,、uh, and so it's not my imagination. This is actually being documented in the Six Bay Chart Sutra. And then he did not dare submit it. You see, he's thinking too much. Okay, and so in four days, four days he made thirteen attempts. Okay.、Um, Mm. And、uh, and so next three thirty four. Then he thought, I might as well write it on the wall so that the high master might see it suddenly. Xiu nai si wei bu ru xiang lang xia shu zhuo cong ta he shang kan jian. If he says it's good. I will come forward, bow, and say, "Xiu did it." Hu ruo dao hao ji chu li bai yun shi xiu zuo. Okay, so、uh, Master Sheng Xiu decided on an expedient. Okay, he's been thinking about it for for for、uh, four days.、Uh, And he couldn't come up with.、Uh, he didn't have enough uh, uh, enough uh, 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 courage, so he's fearful. You see why? Why I keep on telling you, if you don't resolve your fear, when you get to this level, you won't make it. Doesn't matter how long you're there. It doesn't matter how long 
you be a fourth stage arhat. Next lifetime, you be a fourth stage arhat. And then a lifetime after that, a lifetime after that, and on and on and on. Because you will run through this type of situation where you never planted the seeds to resolve the fear in your heart. Okay, so he decided to do it the chicken way. He says, I will do it anonymously. Hmm? Isn't it sad? Second in command. Decades of training under a fifth bay truck and had to do it. Incognito. So it says, High Master sees it and then see what he thinks. The High Master here refers to it's a, a, um, a, a high ranking uh, a monk. Uh, it's, uh, so it's, it's, uh, uh, it's an honored uh, kind of monk in India. Uh, in India, the High Master would teach precepts. Uh, conduct ceremonies, okay. Uh, whereas, uh, e, uh, whereas uh, for us in a Chinese system, uh, we uh, we also uh, include uh, uh, like Master Shehua includes everything, you know, these precept ceremonies, Dharma sutras, and so forth, okay. Uh, in Asia, uh, according to the notes here, is highest ranking, even high Acharya. Uh, and uh, and it meets the standard of, of having high virtues in the way and a long practice okay uh, long practice uh, meaning that uh, how many uh, summer retreats you go through or uh, the way it used to be is that they measure your Dharma years by the end of the summer retreat it was used to be the case where every monk and nun would have to go into a summer retreat. That's obligatory uh, until, uh, until uh, the Chan school came along. Mm -hmm. Chinese Chan school came along. Okay? Uh, and and uh, nowadays, uh, in a Dharma ending age, it's just older monks. It's called high master in charge of temple. Okay? Uh, so, uh, let's see, an older monk huh, in charge of the temple has way virtue. All we need now is comportment. <laughs> okay? We'll work on that. Hmm. All right. Uh, yes, question from Kong. Master, uh, I have a question, but it's not uh, directly... Uh, related to the sutra, and before that, I want to repent. Is it okay to do that? Sure. Mm, okay. Uh, so uh, I want to repent about. <laughs> I want to repent about a uh, bad mouth thing, bad mouth about Banyabushanan, like uh, because. Um, like, uh, like uh, when, when I, I'm still, uh, when I was still, when I was a lay person, uh, and in Jo Mountain Temple, and I saw Vanya Bhushanna, she didn't clean the her dishes after the meal, after, and then she left without cleaning her dishes. So I complained and. Bad mouthing about Venerable Shannan in Jo Mountain Temple, and not just that. I even in Jo Kong after I left home life, and like uh, when I I still remember when I was with uh, Jumi in the kitchen, I bad mouthing about Venerable Shannan because she didn't clean her dish. Oh, I want to repent about that, and 
And in front of Venerable Chandan, I'm pretending that I'm fine with her. I'm, I'm pretending like I like her, but actually it was not. So. Uh, Is that Xin An or Xin An? That's Shen uh, An. Xin An. XA. <laughs> XA. Xin An. Oh, Xin An. Yeah. Oh, okay. everyone complains uh, about her. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not just that. Uh, actually, I complained a lot about her her food, <laughs> and still, uh, so I want to repent about that because today is her birthday in Korea. So <laughs> I'm trying to be truthful to her, and mm, and, not, and, and, and I also her, want to repent and wish her about a life good, a good to happy Jimmy. birthday. And uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, hope you won't be as messy with uh, with the uh, food dishes. <laughs> and I want to repent to to me, and uh, because I uh, I cannot specify the certain date, but uh, among one day in September, uh, there was some. Incident and because of that incident, Venerable Shenzi he came to Zhou Kong that day, and that day, uh, Jumi didn't know about that. Uh, Master Z would come to Zhou Kong, so after he arrived, Jumi asked me that, uh, when, uh, Venerable XK, did you already know about that he will? will uh, he was coming to Zhou Kong, but I said uh, I didn't know. But actually, I know I knew about that. So I want to repent about lying because I was scared. Oh. Uh, I was I was scared and and I was uh, still unhappy uh, with to me. In September. Oh, everyone's I'm, unhappy with Jumi. <laughs> yeah, I was pretending that I'm fine with Jumi. Actually, I was not. <laughs> I see. Well, you Koreans have a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sick. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, and not just that. Um, uh, last uh, spring, like Jumi asked about the birthday of Master Z. I already knew his birthday, but I didn't tell her, and I told her I didn't know his birthday exactly. But actually, I knew because I'm a big fan of fortune teller application, so I knew. <laughs> um, I so I want to uh, repent about lying to me, and <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, little and, liar. But, yeah. So not only are you little, you're a little liar. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, what so, else? Uh, well, I have all cut. Uh, I thought that it was okay to lie and manipulate others because many people do that. And, and I thought it's okay because actually based on the facts, so I keep just thinking, Justifying myself, it's not lying, but actually it was not. Uh, uh, I found myself, I did the same thing like my parents did to me. They... Uh, She's crying. Oh. Girls do that. Uh, actually, uh, they 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 told me a lie in front of me, and I knew that because they love me. But I I cannot trust them anymore. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> And and I and like and I did same thing to them. I in front of my parents. I'm pretending that I trust my parents, but actually I shut uh, my heart 
so I, I, I locked up my heart and I did I decide not to trust anyone mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of suffering. And and And, and I don't know, but I'm still uh, pretending, trusting them, and I take advantage of their loving and caring of me and, and money. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, yeah, and, uh, so, and I found myself, I did the same thing. I, I, I kept trusting justifying myself, I just tell the facts, so it's, but actually it's not, it's a lie. But I don't know how to communicate with other people without lying and pretending and being manipulative, so... You're just like everyone else. No need to repent. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now, uh, at, at Famasa, I really got hurt from my parents lying to me, and oh no, I don't want to do that. Anything okay, now else. this is like, like a Mary Jo kind of uh, topic. <laughs> she would put you on a, on a sofa, and you lie down on the sofa, put your hands on your forehead, and say, "Oh, doctor, my parents lied to me." No, the other hand. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, what else? Yes. That's uh what else? <sighs> you know, honey, let me tell you. I I I think I could I could uh whatever you say next would not surprise me. Okay? And this is what uh normal for ordinary people. Okay. Uh and um, don't blame your parents. Uh, we all behave that way. Okay, uh, because uh, because we don't know any better. That's all. Okay, because uh, uh, we see our parents do it, and we see they saw their parents uh, do it, and then before that, same thing, same thing. So that's how. We, uh, we got uh, conditioned, so everyone behaves like that. Okay, uh, and it's too bad uh, because uh, it uh, causes problems for the children. And that's why, that's why uh, the one thing though, I hope that you parents who cultivate, at least you will break uh, the vicious cycles and not do this to your own children or your nephews and nieces. Okay? Uh, that's important. Uh, we need to break these vicious cycles where it's not okay to uh, lie to people, especially your own, your own family members. Uh, uh, and it causes, you know, not, not just about you, uh, my little baby liar. Uh, me too, when I was your age, uh, the fact that I, when I realized my mother lied through her teeth, uh, it bothered, it hurt me deeply. It's just like, I could never trust a woman again. Okay, and then I saw my sisters lied like her when she became a little bit older and she lied just as well and manipulated people just as well. She learned from the master, more or less. Uh, so, you see, uh, don't, don't feel that you are any special and anything, uh, uh, your parents any different. Uh, actually, it's pretty commonplace. Am I, am I, am I right? Now, now we might as well air, you know, dirty laundry and, and spit it out, okay? Uh, it's just what is called normal. 
And what people don't realize what is normal, what is accepted in, in society, actually is very hurtful. It creates, no, you're not the only one. Uh, my little baby liar, I too had emotional scars. That it's not until I became a monk and practiced Mahasheshenghua's Dharma, and I had to look at my, my suffering. Uh, and that's why I realized I had all kinds of emotional scars, okay? Uh, that uh, as an adult, I learned to sweep them under the rugs and not look at them because it hurts too much. That's what everyone has to do to survive. Because it's bad enough, we have to go to work and make a living, make ends meet. Okay, and, uh, and, and so um, the, to simplify things for you, okay, uh, the fact you are able to recognize it means that the Dharma is working. Because normally people do not dare look at it because it hurts too much. Okay? And, and, uh, and because they don't dare to look at it, uh, uh, their children uh, do the same exact thing. Okay? And so uh, I feel that uh, you're on the right track because you begin to be able to dare look at it. And, and, and once you, uh, if you continue to cultivate eventually, you overcome all those problems and uh, help uh, can be, uh, can really help people. Because uh, if, you, if, though, if you can recover from your emotional scars and overcome those, uh, those uh, hang-ups, uh, then you're able to see uh, the suffering of others and help others overcome their sufferings too from those hang-ups, from those scars. All right? So it's a matter of time. So in, in other words, I'm happy that after uh, a few months, you begin to look at yourself and say, oh my God, I am not a good person. That's called return to the light and look within. You stop looking at Xin'an's problems. You stop looking at uh, the lay people's problems, my problems. We look at your problems. You're a little liar. You have a lot of problems. And that's the most important starting point that most people do not dare do because it hurts. Privately, as well as publicly, it hurts. That's our way. Okay? All right. Anyone would like to, Xianan, would you like to let her have it? Hello. <laughs> Master, I really adore her because... Um, Even though she, she misled you and lied to you all this time? Well, she, I knew. You knew? Yeah. You knew she was lying to you. <laughs> but it's not really lie, but like I feel she she's afraid of you of being rejected or disliked. But uh, I know she tried really hard every day. Uh, I was really impressed when she did a long sit and came to me and said, I'm so sorry I did this and that. Uh, for her young age, I have a lot of respect for her. She even have a met to in person, you know. She what? 
She what? She haven't. She hasn't even met you in person, and uh, and she did all this uh, trying to be better. I I feel really impressed about her. Or she could be crazy. Yeah, it's that's a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so easily impressed. <laughs> Only time will tell, honey. Okay, uh, this is a game of longevity, a game of survival. Because it's very tough. It's very ugly. Looking at yourself is very ugly. Okay, hey, a uh, very more sangwo. Yeah. Uh, do you have this kind of confession in public at all? In Korea, in your training program? I'm just getting curious. I put her on the spot. Yes, yes, we... Yeah, we do, yes. I'm holding my breath. Please go on. Um, For example, I, uh, when I got training, uh -huh. um, once for once three months, we all got together and we talk about what we have done so far, what did we did a good thing, what's wrong. We discuss about that. So some people, uh, yeah, repent. Okay, okay, and that's it. Okay, thank you. Oof. I thought they never repent. <laughs> and what about what about the other Korean sunims uh, in Weimang Temple? Can we have some some input from them? Did they did, uh, did they did they go through this repentance thing here and public uh, confession? I'm curious. I'm really curious. Hello? Anybody home? I got another hour. I can wait. I learned to wait. Oh, hello, Master. I'm Soju. Yes. Uh, 한국 승가에서 상국 스님 말씀하신 것처럼 3 개월에 한 번씩 모여서 음, 지금까지 무엇을 잘했고 잘못했는지를 참회하는 자리가 있기는 합니다만 제가 느낀 바로 개인적으로 느낀 바로는. 음 사실 그렇게 공개적인 자리에서 자기의 가장 사적이고 또 바라보기가 힘든 부분들을 꺼내어서 얘기한 것을 본 적은 없었던 것 같습니다. Yeah, we we also have the system like us. Sangwook Sunim said, "We have a, we gather together one to three months and talk about what we have done, what's good thing, what's bad thing. But personally, I have never seen that people who repent the personal thing publicly. So discuss the good and you know, the bad things you did, but never repent of your uh, uh, your uh, your." Personal problems, like this, like like Xian Kong's problems. No, is that is that correct? Yes, Master. Some <sighs> we need to have a talk. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Kong. That's interesting. It's so interesting.
You can't. Please unmute yourself. Uh, I think in Korean culture, we are scared of being judged uh, because we have this thing, saving the face. Uh, I think how Shane Kong uh, decided to do it without anybody pressuring her, uh, I think that is, that is very rare. Maybe she's because, lying. Huh? Maybe she's lying for repenting? Well, I call a little liar. We, we will see. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, what I'm trying to say is like uh, when we did, we did the drum for a long time, uh, I think it took like six months or longer for everybody to start opening up like, oh, I have depression, uh, I have this anger issue. Like it, it took a long time uh, for a Cor typical Korean person to open up and talk about the personal problems. So Koreans in general, what you say in very Sienan is that even though you half Korean, half American, you spend more time in America than in Korea, uh, you, uh, you feel the Koreans have a lot of problems. They're like uh, face oriented. I think a Korean culture has a lot of problem because we hide. <laughs> he, he young likes my line of questioning. <laughs> oh, but like everyone else. You little sneaky person. <laughs> yeah? That's what we do to employees, by the way. Hmm. Master, you have a nickname. I do. Yes. That's not, that's like not hear it. In Korean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how interesting, huh? It's so fascinating to me. I mean, uh, this, is, this is so taboo. You know, if I talk to Vim Bo Myun, who will never talk about this, he'll tell me about the price of tea in China but, and, and uh, green tea and so forth. You will never talk about the Korean stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and the young people, they like they have no sense of you know propriety. <laughs> yeah, okay, what about the monks? Jung In and Won Tech, confess. Jung In is not doing that. That's Jung In for sure. We don't have a such a system. Click at one tech. Oh, good. One text is one He's a one liner one monk. Line. Yes, Master. I don't know. Can I eat some more? One text you need. How do you feel about the Korean? Uh, uh. Yes, Master, we don't have the kind of uh, system and uh, we don't, uh, we have uh, the kind of, we do have, but uh, it's uh, artificial. Artificial. Oh, God, yes. this guy is brutal. <laughs> like Chung In, right? Would you say Chung In is like uh, artificial? Don't think. Yes or no, it's very simple. <laughs> gotcha. You Koreans are incorrigible. Okay, let me tell you. When I was nervous at Mashishewa's temples, I saw the Chinese confess. They say, I'm sorry, I, you know, I, I stole this, I told that, and I said a lie. And I, I, sitting, I sat there and said, I will, will I'll never be caught confessing like this. <laughs> Are you crazy? You know, we Vietnamese, we love our face. We, we, don't, we don't do this. This is insanity. <laughs> How disgusting these Chinese are. Okay, it turns out the Vietnamese and Koreans are the same. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the little liar. 
<laughs> okay, uh, and um, and uh, let me. I I need to admit to you that for years I carried that. I said no way I will admit myself that I did these things and and you know all those things to embarrass myself in front of people. I have no respect for. Why should I? That's my excuse. Isn't that sad? So my excuse is because of them. And what the little liar did is for herself. That's the difference. The way the Sang Wook talk about, they got together and discuss what's good and right is artificial, like some Korean Sunim just said, okay? Who also feels that the other Sunim is also artificial. He young, you like my style of, of, of pulling teeth and words out of uh, one tech, huh? <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, let me tell you. If you are not willing to look at your faults, okay? That's the baggage you carry with yourself every single day because you know. You know. It bothers you inside. And you're scared. There's no way to live. Think about it. It's best you all confess to me. <laughs> Jews, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I prefer the Chinese system. We don't talk about it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, all overall, okay, uh, I can see why they all are impressed by the little liar. She does things that are weird. I would not ever do that. <laughs> However, yeah. Uh, because you dare talk about the things you did wrong, okay? Uh, even though some of it is just lies, uh, you unburden yourself. Now we're the one who carry your burden. You say, oh, little liar. You are a little liar. You see? So, so who's suffering now? Me or you? You, you're a little liar. I don't suffer. <laughs> you got the point? <clears throat> that is, that is uh, you may not want to do public repentances. This is why, why we have a great compassionate repentance, why you can repent the one in Bodhisattva. That's another way. Okay? Uh, there are many ways, but the point here is that uh, I commend the little liar on daring... Uh, to uh, air her daily laundry, okay, which is very non-Korean, okay, uh, and and it's shocking to the older Koreans or the more mature Koreans, okay, uh, because you are judged, you exposing yourself to be judged, okay, and it's not just Koreans. I as a Vietnamese behave that way as well, okay? Most people I know behave that way as well. And that's why we have, we carry so much baggage on our back every day. Okay? It's sad. Okay? So, uh, eventually, we all need to find a way to earn burden ourselves, okay? And the little liar is, is uh, smarter than us. She started early like this so that she can travel a lot further, a lot quicker. Okay? Uh, and, and that's, I feel, is what made the Chinese system Master Shima brought to us 
you turn the light and look within, that's what it means. I never saw any Chinese at his temple do that or anyone do it in a non-artificial way. It's all contrived. They repented, but then they withheld. They held back. They didn't go all the way, expose everything. Okay? Whatever you do, you, you do not wish to uncover is continues to be your baggage, continues to be where the ghosts and demons will hide and proliferate. Yes, that's okay. We have all the antidotes as well. All right. Very good. No wonder they don't like you. I think they're all fooled by your lies. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? YouTube, go ahead. Hello, Master. Hello. Um, I also would like to repent first if what I'm about to say uh, making me committing offenses that I'm so stupid. Um, I have heard of it personally um, on YouTube. Uh, a Tibetan teacher in Hong Kong, she, I think she makes repentance, this kind of public repentance, something like on a monthly basis for her students. And uh, she emphasized the importance and she's asking her disciples to repent. And she said, I cannot help you unless you repent. Now, the only question or problem I have is this lady's talk is really, really good. She's but what? one thing I struggled was she this was lady the one that... What? Uh, I, I could not hear that sentence. This lady is what? Uh, this My lady, problem her, is this lady her, is... Blah, blah, blah. Her Dharma talk is very good. And that's a very, problem? Very good, according to, she really emphasized karmic condition creating blessing. But one, one problem karmic that I struggle with. Karmic creating to, blessings? It sounds so complicated. <laughs> it sounds pretty one good. Problem, what, um, and her talk is very popular. Uh, I think she has the highest number of like, viewing on YouTube. Not one problem was she uh, mentioned that the um, Suranga mantra or sutra uh, was fake. And that I struggle a lot. I heard of that before I took refuge with you. So I was like, really, I was really struggling. Maybe that was part of my obstruction. So I don't get, my question is, I don't get oh, there why is a question. Such, a, such a good person would uh, make a comment like that with the Surangama Sutra. Is that something related to demon? I have no idea and I don't care. Why should I care about her? Whatever but you should teaches. care about me, Master. <laughs> Whatever she teaches the disciples is what is between her and her disciples. Why should I make a comment? Please don't take me wrong. When I make a comment, it's for my disciples, not for her disciples. If whatever she teaches to her disciples, that's a private thing. It's none of my business. Whatever Dalai Lama teaches his disciples is between them, whatever... You know, uh, it teaches me then the only time I comment is for my disciple to illustrate the teaching point for my disciples. That's all. That's all I care about. 
So if you ask me a comment about whether, you know, um, that, that Nand is okay or Master Shenhua is okay and so forth, out of context, well, whatever he does, his students, it's none of my business. All I care about, I want to make sure my students learn the, you know, the, the, uh, the fun dharma, the superior dharma of the way yang, so that, uh, so that uh, way yang, chan, prospers in the world. That's all I care about. And, and you still don't get it, you know, spine number two, after all these years, you want me to make comments about people? I don't care to make comments about people. It's none of my business. Okay? It's no different than you, for example, uh, making comments about others, uh, people's families. It's called gossiping. None of your business. None of my business. Okay? I'm sorry. I can't, uh, I can't help you there. I keep on disappointing you. But it's none of my business. What do I care to comment about her, about her teachings, about this monk's teaching? Or oh, this monk's enlightened, this, and that none is not, and so forth. None of my business. I only open my big mouth in order to rectify my students. I can't care less about what others did with their students. It's a big world. Whatever you know, they do inside the temples is their business. The, the, you are adults. You should choose what to believe, what's proper for you. Who am I to keep on, you know, who am I to dare comment about what's right and wrong? Okay? Let me put it this way for you, once for all. I don't care is right or wrong. I only care that you get enlightened. That's the only thing I care about. Whether I'm right or wrong, are they right or wrong, is totally irrelevant. I have zero interest in that. All right? Sorry to disappoint you. Go ahead, Jewel Mountain. え、あ、개인적인 I have a son, uh, he is 36 years old, and I want, um, I have a very strong attachment to him, and I want to ask you how I can cut off the attachment. Is he married? No. Marry him. <laughs> He brought two girlfriends, but I disagreed, so they broke up. Leave him alone. So I have been doing this for a long time, and I have been a I've been practicing for one, one year, and then I have a very strong attachment to my son. If I don't solve this problem, I think I can um, get progress in my practice. That's why I'm asking this question. That's why I'm telling you, this way, the one quick way to solve your problem is give him away to a girl.
Have another girl. Take care of him. Why, why are you worried about that? You have to approve the girl? Because I have a strong attachment. Wait, 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 wait. I know you have a strong attachment. But his two girlfriends, you disapprove of them. Yes? Yes. Okay, and by the way, this is, uh, this is not Six Patriarch Sutra anymore. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is Dear Master. <laughs> hey, internet people, I'm desperate <laughs> to hang on to anyone who listens in, <laughs> claims even my followers, <laughs> and claims to cultivate. Okay, so you dis disapprove of the two girls, yes? Yes. Ne, ne. Very good. Now, the first one, what do you disapprove about her? Just give me one thing that you really don't like about the first girl. Just one thing, please. She's too pretty. 아니요 그런 게 아니고 공부 중인데 끼 중인데 결혼을 하자고 막 서둘러서. That's a lot of. No, they were students and they were hurry about getting married. They want to get married quickly. And they're too young. That's the problem. Yes. Okay. 학교 공부 중이었어요. They were studying. Yeah, they were student. Okay, fine. What about second girl? <laughs> You're right. Okay. Hey, hey, see, watch me. Okay, watch me. You're right. Okay, second girl. <laughs> now Sienan is interested. I said, my God, my says is becoming a counselor. <laughs> second girl, what is the problem? 또 상대방 부모님이 저희를 반대했어요. She's pretty. No, they they disapprove us. 아니요, 예쁘진 않았어요. She was not pretty. What what is the second problem? They the girlfriend's family disagreed. Disapprove of him. They disapproved um, the parents. Disapprove of him? No, not him. His parents, son's parents. The girlfriend's parents disapproved the son's parents. Disapproved of her? Of her. The son parent is her. Yes. Nay. Okay. 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 I don't know what to say to you without hurting your feelings. <laughs> How old? your son is thirty. Your son is thirty four years old? 36. Okay. Would you like him to get married or not? I agree. Okay. You want to have grandchildren or not? No, she doesn't want grandchildren. Why not? It's going to take some time. Huh? I don't know the reason. She can't let go of her son and she wants to, she wants to manage his life. Okay? Uh, 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what else to tell you. You, you're a controlling, unbearable woman, mother. Yes, this is what happens in life. Let me tell you. Okay, uh, when your son becomes an adult, okay, uh, here's what happens. Uh, when your son becomes 18 years old, or maybe you do, might want to decide that he graduates from college, 22, 23, okay? Then he's considered adult, all right? And therefore, uh, you have to let him live his life and not meddle. Okay? It's not a good thing to meddle into your son's life until he calls you. Because if you keep on meddling to his life without him asking for your help, he will end up hating you. Be careful. You don't want that. You don't want your son to end up hating you, do you? You see? So that's why if you want to have a good relationship with your son, you have to let go of him right now so that he has a chance to really want you in his life. And when that happens, he'll ask you. You don't have to worry about it. But the worst thing you can do as a mother for him is to force yourself on him like that. Why? Because he said, I love him, I can't let go of you. I'm going to call you, I'm going to bring food to you. Okay? Uh, you are making him hate you in the future. You don't want that, do you? And this is the difference be, uh, be for, for parents. This is what parents like you need to understand. You have to step back and let him live his life. And, uh, and uh, hopefully he'll call you when he wants you, when he needs you. And he will, trust me. He will, I guarantee it. But let it be that let him call you when he really needs you. Don't force yourself on him right now. Let him make mistakes, let him learn, let him suffer. So that he can learn about life. That there's no way for you to teach him or to protect him from the suffering that life uh, imposes on all of us. There's no way to shield your children from that. So the sooner he learns, the happier he'll become. And at this stage here, you need to step back and wait for him to approach you. Don't insert yourself in his life anymore. You are destroying his love for you. Be, be cognizant of the, of the difference between love and dependency. If you force yourself on him because it's you, only because you feel that he depends on you, he can depend on you, that's not love. Love is when, can I tell you? That when he doesn't see you, he says, oh, where's mommy? I wish I could talk to mommy. Then he'll call you. That's the kind of love you want with your child. Not dependency. Okay? You're wrong. You're making him dependent on you, on your financial support, your emotional support, and so forth. 
Okay? That's wrong. Step back. Free him. Hmm? Let him suffer. All right. Anyone else uh, have uh, anything they yeah. want to add? I never had children, so please don't trust anything I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I talk about anything, but don't trust me. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Baby wants to confess some more. Okay, baby, you got five minutes. Talk, speak quickly. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so actually, uh, uh, I'm not just, I want to repent. I bad mouthing everyone. And, <laughs> uh, uh, and I also want to uh, apologize to Venerable Shen Un, XE. Uh, oh, no, now, now we move to X. Do you offend, uh, never offend anyone at all? You don't uh, trust uh, XZ, you don't like XA, you offended XE, I don't dare go to, China, to Korea anymore. <laughs> a good thing, maybe it's a good thing we never met. <laughs> Is that you uh, crying or laughing? I'm crying. I'm crying for my, my poor monks and nuns. Other than you. Sorry, I'm sick Go and ahead. I have a lot of problems. <laughs> I ahead. know. Yeah, okay, okay. Oh, I apologize, uh, Xinan. Oh, Xinan, I, okay, Xinan, uh, uh, listen carefully and see how, uh, how, how, uh, how, uh, how, uh, how this uh, little baby liar, uh, how horrible she really is. Go ahead. Uh, and I knew that she was on Apple with my uh, high key ceremony and uh, and and I recited mantra really really fast. So I I already knew that she would not catch up the speed, but uh, I insist my way. And if she cannot catch catch up the speed, then I look down upon her inside in in my mind, and I want to apologize. Oh, you <laughs> are. That. And not just that, and um, and I can feel that when she was upset, my body. Uh, my body got hurt, then I blamed on her. Okay, very good. I, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, let me stop you. Uh, you little rotten little liar. Okay, continue. Okay, uh, so... Uh, Before I forgot that thought. Uh, and, and that just went over, actually, and I want to repent and apologize to Jumi and Busong uh, couple. They helped me a lot. Uh, even before I left home life, uh, they helped me a lot, and I and I know they. Uh, but uh, when they stayed in Jo Kong, they contributed a lot. But uh, when I began to get sick of them, then I bad mouthing of them to Venerable XA. I was I was very manipulative and I gathered facts and edit the words and uh, make it <laughs> and uh, I it make makes it me it. wonder about the judgment of all my left home people there they all seem to like you and I uh, yeah I I I do all those things because I don't want to get hurt from others and I don't and I want everyone likes me and I'm crazy. <laughs> um, so now uh, everyone hates you. Uh, it's okay, I deserve. <laughs> okay, anything else? <laughs> and 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 yeah, and that uh and actually they asked me, uh is it is it better just which one is better to stay in Jo Kong or Jo Mountain Temple. I told them maybe Jo Mountain Temple because Master G is more stable and <laughs> <laughs> so 
sorry, and I, I, was, I was very arrogant and disrespectful to Venerable XA. <laughs> you know, XA uh, is very unstable. I know that. I know that. Instable. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think it's it's. Uh, so it's better to go to the mountain temple, but in my mind, uh, not just uh, my intention was uh, it's it's not pure. So oh, one side, I I really truly think it's it helps them better. He will help, he would help them better. But the other side, oh, this is enough. I'm sick of them. So why don't you just get out? So. I'm, Sorry. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, I really want to uh, get rid of them. That was enough. Uh, that was my uh, <laughs> true intention to tell them. You are a horrible person. I know. Okay. Uh, so, I'm a, I'm yeah, a, so, I'm yeah, I was very... Uh, I'm still very manipulative, and I want to fix my problem, and I really want to apologize to Jumi and Bhutan Koppu. They really helped me a lot, and I appreciate that. And, and, uh, and I want to confess that i still unhappy with them. I, I see. So, um, so, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. What were the people present there? The men behind you and the two in, uh, you know, the three, the four of them there. Uh, actually, I don't like everyone because whenever <laughs> every person enters uh, in the temple, my body hurts. I hate pain. Hey, girl, this is time to lie. Don't, 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 don't push away everyone. I have no, no one left. <laughs> Uh, I don't think Jumi is going to gonna come back to, to Kong anymore. Any and if these four people leave as well, we might as well close Kong. Uh, I'm sorry, but I, I have to endure the pain. But in my mind, I complain a lot whenever a person enter our temple. Oh, <laughs> like... Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. And she and I says, I, I, I want her to come help me. Actually, you come to push everyone away. <laughs> and because uh, she and I is too instable. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what to do. Uh, okay. Master Z is your problem. I told you. <laughs> you have a lot of problems. A lot of work to do. And think about it, guys. What do you see in her? Can I ask you a question? I heard that you also translated from Korea, Korean into English and will omit certain parts of the translations on purpose. Am I correct? You being, uh, uh, admitting you being manipulative, that would not uh, be above you, beneath you. I, I don't get it, your question, Master. Can you repeat again? So, for example, when you translate it between, uh, from Korean, from CNN's Korean into English, Master Z, uh, you omit certain parts in the translation. Am I correct? On purpose? Uh, I didn't do that uh, on purpose, but uh, did you my, or did because you of my poor English. I see. Okay. Okay, just checking. Okay. Uh, I have a horrible disciple. Isn't it wonderful? I told you I have evil within my ranks. <laughs> it's all my only excuse, all in order to help you improve faster. 
Watch out. You have to be on your toes. This evil disciple of mine will stab you in the back and will, will fool you, will mislead you. Okay? Yeah. Go ahead, Jewel Kong. Yes, hey, go ahead and make a comment. You being unstable and everything. Yes, I know I'm unstable. Uh, by the way, regarding her translating, uh, when she translates a lot of time, she did in the group text message. So I know she's not intentionally um, omitting about this. At least as far as I know, but uh, yeah. So from my experience, I think, uh, like for example, I tried it to translate for XE and somehow she feels that way, so we don't know. Maybe she needs a different translator. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't feel like lecturing anymore. <laughs> After this, the six page chart like pales in comparison in terms of depth of the human mind. Master Huynang is so naive. Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, uh, case not closed. We will we'll continue next time you have more confessions to make. All right. Uh, okay, let's continue. Uh, 337, I have 15 more minutes. If it is not acceptable, then I have spent my years on this mountain in vain, receiving veneration from others. What way have I have been cultivating? Okay. <laughs> The um, Chinese translation from Chinese to English has some, some things that I didn't like, but I don't care because this is thinking of Xiang uh, Chiu. I don't care to go into it. Okay? Their translation to me is a little bit uh, unstable. Uh, but I don't care to delve into, into this kind of person, okay? Uh, after hearing the confession, you know, this is kind of, <laughs> that's all you got? I mean, Jesus, you know, Chinese are so pure. Uh, after years in practice in this mountain, he says, yeah, he's uh, uh, practicing under Master Hung, Hung Ren, what way have I been cultivating, he says, you know. You see, again, it's not his fault. To me, it's a commitment between the master and his disciples. To me, I hope that in the future, in our uh, times, in 21st century and the future times, uh, the, the good no advisor should took, take upon his, himself or herself uh, to uh, uh, to tell the disciples that they can't be helped and let them move on instead of let them waste their time. But to me, it seems like Master Hung Ran is too passive. Teaching cannot be passive. Teaching is very proactive. Especially, certain teaching is very proactive. It cannot wait. When the time is right, you have to hit it. Uh, when the iron is hot, you have to hit it. You cannot wait. That's what a swordsmith does. He hits the iron so that when it's right, he has to hit the impurities out of the iron. Uh, 
All right? So to me, this is disappointing. And, and I'm not Chinese. Please, Chinese people, forgive me. I open my big mouth. I'm only worried about our times. Where I feel that the uh, I feel that the Mahayana we got from a Chinese is so superior, so fantastic, that uh, that we need to maintain the high standards to make sure that we propagate its uh, its uh, its uh, its um, beautiful wisdom. All right. Hmm. So this is our uh, 339. This is the, uh, uh, the famous lines that Sheng Xiu produced. All body is Bodhi tree. Mind is like a bright mirror stand. Time and time again, brush it clean. Let no dust alight. Ji Yue, Shen Shi Pu Ti Shu, Xin Ru Ming Jing Tai, Shi Shi Qing Fu Shi, Wu Shi Re Cheng Ai. So, so, uh, what basically you can you I I know almost all of you have heard this before, uh, and uh, and uh, this basically says uh, this is this is describes it from the perspective of someone who still cultivating hasn't seen hasn't reached the end of the tunnel yet. So he says this body here is. Very important, Bodhi tree. It's, it is it is sacred, okay, to the Buddhas. A Bodhi tree is sacred concept, and the mind is a, like a mirror stand. Okay, this is from the Buddhist teaching. The mind, if you have wisdom, is like a mirror. Okay, the mind of wisdom is like a mirror. Okay, it's a very important Buddhist concept. So that's important. That's important to emphasize. And time and time again, brush it clean. Okay, it says you, you need to brush your mind clean and let no, no dust alight. And so, and so it's funny. It's funny that he started by saying body is Bodhi tree, and after that he's focused on the mind. Okay, so the verse here, from a com, com, composition perspective, is unbalanced. Why do you go from body and then start with the body and then go to mind? That means that the first line is a filler. Hmm? He just said he's just his his thesis is the mind. So he came up with three lines, and then the fourth, the fourth one is, and he says. Uh oh, mind and body. Okay, that's a Buddhist concept. You cultivate, you need to cultivate mind and body. So that's why inserted body is a Bodhi tree. But it's out of sync. It doesn't make sense. The Bodhi tree and the body versus mind, and, and mind is the mind, so brush it clean and let no, let no dust of light in the mind. What about your, your body? You see? It, it, it is. It is artificial, if you will. It's forced. It's like, like you hear these songs, there's some beautiful refrains, and all of a sudden you have all these lines that, that are there just, just because of the music is there, so you need to put some lines there, and that's all. Okay? Uh, uh. Whereas the great the singers, uh, when they are high, everything sing together beautifully. <laughs> because the mind is consistent. It's hallucination. It's not artificial. This is artificial. Agree, disagree. I mean, this is, it's so, it's so well, uh, quoted, so often quoted, and many people commented on that. And to me, it, it is it is bad synthesis, if you will. All right? Inferior. 
thinking. After writing this verse, Sheng Xiu returned to his room and no one noticed it. Okay, uh, 342. And then he thought, if the fifth patriarch sees the verse tomorrow and is pleased, it will mean I have an affinity with the Dharma. And, and so he did it stealthily, okay, uh, that, 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 that he had to do it that way is, is, uh, is, uh, is, um, is, um, not a good cultivation practice, okay? Uh, and uh, so, anyway, that's what he does. I don't want to beat a dead horse. I'm totally uh, feel for him. I feel, feel for Shen Xiu. Uh, text, if he says that, is, that it is not acceptable, that means that I'm confused by heavy karmic obstacles from past lives, and that I'm not fit to obtain the Dharma. It is difficult to fathom the sage's intentions. And then he makes excuses to himself. He justifies why he's doing this, why he's not doing that, and so forth. Okay. Uh, this is Fahai's the person who transcribed this sutra okay mm. this is Fahai is a higher level than Sheng Xiu okay uh, but Fahai doesn't have didn't have the wisdom to leave this out because it makes the fifth patriarch look bad. It makes Sheng Xiu look bad. It destroys Sheng Xiu's reputation for us future generations. Because the Chinese are way too polite, and I'm not polite. Okay? Uh, I feel for Sheng Xiu. You don't need to describe his agony like this because it makes the fifth page look bad to me. All right? And he says, it's hard to fathom the sage's intention. So this guy here, think about it. This guy here has been desperately following the fifth page for decades. Slave to him. In the end, he says, he's a sage. I, I can't touch him. Why would he even wish to succeed, to be his successor? So this guy, is, he's suffering so much. He's so confused. Back in the room, he can't help thinking about it and could not sit or sleep in peace right through the fifth watch. 房中思想坐卧不安,直至 Mm, and he couldn't sleep. Uh, 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 he's very tormented, uh, couldn't sleep. Okay, uh, 348, the patriarch already knew that Sheng Xiu had not entered the gate and seen his self-nature. Mm. At daybreak, the patriarch called court artist Lu Chen to fresco the wall of the South Corridor. And so the patriarch, of course he knew, knew that Sheng Xiu was not good enough. Okay? 
has now entered the gate. Uh, enter the gate here refers to knew that Sengchou Bu Ruman, okay, uh, has now entered the gate. Important concept. Okay, in Buddhism, the good knowing advisor help you navigate through obstacles in order to get to that gate, like right there. And you have to enter it yourself. That's where, that's all your teacher can do for you. You have to go through it yourself. Okay? Uh, so the fifth patriarch, Nu Sheng Xiu, did not enter the gate. Okay? Uh, meaning that he's still stuck outside. He's an outsider to Mahayana. He's not inside Mahayana. Okay? And, and because when you enter the gate, you see yourself nature. Okay? You enter through that gate. So that's why Buddhism has like 84,000 Dharma doors. That's the gate that he's referring to. Man here, uh, the door. Okay? Or gate. Gate is bigger door. Okay? Uh, and, and, uh, and so when you talk about door versus gate, is that door is individual, smaller size. Gate is for many more people. Okay? So the translation here, they translate it from man, which is door, typically a door. They translate it into gate. So what? Okay? Uh, but anyway, the 84,000 gates or doors that people, that good known advisor knows about and then help you uh, try to get there and hopefully you go through it. You have to go through it. They cannot, they won't push you. That's a very important distinction. Okay? Uh, so, for some people like uh, the Catholic, you know, we give them a gate, and they say, no, I'm going back to my God. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, uh, And so he called the, the, the uh, court artist Lu Chen to fresco the, 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 uh, the, uh, the thing, and then he went on, the, and, and, and they, oh, time is up. Hmm. Let me see how much more. Okay, well, I don't think we can finish the rest tonight, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this portion of the sutra. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, final parting words. Okay. Uh, I am pleased that little liar confessed. That's very good. Okay. Confession is only the beginning. Uh, meaning that you have part of cultivation, our style of cultivation, is look at what we are wrong, what we're doing wrong. Okay. That's called confession, at looking at your ugliness, okay? Uh, and uh, by looking how ugly you are, uh, then it g gives you more chances to get rid of your ugliness. So that's your next step. Meaning that you brutal to yourself in terms of embarrassing yourself and me. And your seniors who adore you Okay, yes, uh, that's okay, okay, we're supposed to endure that, okay, that's important, but the much more important thing is for you to uh, decide, commit to that you can be a better person. How? By stopping doing that then you can be forgiven. But if you decide to keep on doing the same thing over and over again, then uh, you uh, simply are hurting yourself. That's all. Okay? So 
I'm not asking for drastic changes. Okay? I'm just reminding you that if you don't change and keep on doing these things, next time you confess. Okay? Uh, it would help you a little bit get a little bit closer. So uh, you be a con you continue to embarrass me, embarrass Master Z, embarrass Yinan, Yinan, and all those people who try to help you, Jumi, and all those people who try to help you. Okay, uh, that's all you're going to keep on doing, and and uh, so therefore today's confession is really not helping you that much. Okay, the best way I I stress for you is to cut it out and stop doing those things. Okay? Resolve to be a better person and take losses. That's our rule in our world. You still see gains. You're afraid to lose. And you cannot gain by stealing people's affection. Like no more than that mother who inserts herself, the mother, the lady who goes to Jewel Mountain, who inserts herself into her son's life to steal his attention, to steal his love. And that's why if she keeps on doing that, her son will end up hating her. Okay? That's all. All right, we stop here tonight. Thank you all uh, for coming. We'll see you next time.